The first half of the year has been marvelous for stocks. What does the second half of the year hold? We'll get some insight from Mark Holbert from the Holbert Financial Digest. Next on Your Money Matters, presented by the Presley Group. There are plenty of people who believe a safe retirement is too good to be true, that there is no safe place for you to go with your money. Even your very own government will try to tax it right out from under your nose. But you've just tuned in to information that can save your retirement nest egg. It's Your Money Matters, featuring two of America's top retirement specialists, Christy Smith and Matt Kennedy with the Presley Group. They can teach you how to retire without all of the risks. Now, let's get back to Your Money Matters. And good morning. Welcome in. I'm Matt Kennedy. Christy Smith will be along shortly. We have a special guest with us this morning to kind of help make some sense of things. You know, each week we try to start the show with uh, someone who's got great knowledge who can kind of help us sort through all the news and get to the truth. And joining us this morning is Mark Holbert. He writes for MarketWatch.com, and he also is publisher of the Holbert Financial Digest. It has been a marvelous first half of the year for stocks. We're seeing record highs. Mark Holbert with us. Mark, what does the second half of 2013 look like? Well, it's a good question. What I did is I went back and I looked at uh, what the Dow Jones Industrial Average has done back to 1896, which is when it was created, and I looked to see if there was any correlation between what it did in the first half of the year and what it did in the second half of the year, and I found that there is no correlation whatsoever. Now, that's either good news or bad news, depending on <laughs> whether you like to see the, the glass is half full or is half empty. Yeah. The good news is that people have been worried that because the, the market has done so well in the first half of the year that a pullback is now more likely on the theory that, after all, the market actually in the first half of the year made more money than is the average return for the entire 12 months of, of the calendar. So that we perhaps have gotten ahead of ourselves, and that's why some people say, well, that means we have an above-average chance of uh, a decline in the second half of the year. I don't find support for that. And yet, on the other hand, here's the bad news, I don't show that there is any momentum in the market, any expectation that just because we had a good first half of the year, that uh, that means we have an above-average chance of let it, con- let it continue for the second half of the year. And basically, to give it a little more theoretical explanation, basically the market is always forward-looking. It's going to be discounting what's coming down the, the pike, looking at what corporate earnings will be, not just this quarter or next quarter, but they look out uh, several quarters, a year or two, in fact, according to researchers. And so uh, in the beginning of this year, they were looking out, after all, for the first several quarters. They liked what they see, and the market went up. Now it's a brand-new ball game. It's looking out, and there's just no relationship between what we saw six months ago with what perhaps it might be seeing now. That means the market could go up, but it will have nothing to do with the fact that it went up in the first half of the year. Mark Holbert with us. Mark. And I guess the real wild card here is the Fed. It's Ben Bernanke. You know, uh, what was it back in June? Bernanke just hinted that he might take his gas, uh, his foot off the gas pedal and ease up the bond buying. Boom, we saw a 400-point drop in one day. But then he comes back earlier this week and says, well, I won't make any moves like that more than likely until unemployment reaches 6.5%. The market loves this easy money, doesn't it? It really does. And, of course, that's the game everyone is playing. They're trying to figure out what uh, Ben Bernanke is going to do. I'd say the speculation right now is that uh, uh, it, Mr. Bernanke has to uh, acknowledge that at some point the, the foot will come off the pedal, but it's not going to be anytime soon, Or and when he does, it's not going to be very dramatic. Uh, so he's just basically, you know, I, the way I like to think of it is that uh, years ago they, uh, during the, the banking crisis, the, uh, the banking regulators would do what's known as a stress test. They would do hypotheticals and say, okay, if this or that happens, would the banks be able to survive and mm-hmm. not have to get more government money to bail them out? Basically what Mr. Bernanke is doing here is a stress test for the markets. He's, he's not going to do anything. But he says, you know, maybe I'm going to start thinking about it. I mean, you can't get much more tentative than that. And he says, okay, let's see how much the market uh, will react. And he, we saw how the market reacted. He says, okay, we've got the information we need. Now we're going to go back and uh, continue to, uh, pun- you know, priming the pump mm-hmm. like we've been doing for years. Mark Holbert with us. He is the founder of Holbert Financial Digest in uh, North Carolina. He's been tracking the advice of more than 160 different financial newsletters since 1980, and if you would like to learn more about the Holbert Financial Digest, you can find out more online at marketwatch.com. 
You recently wrote an article, Mark, where you talked about the price-to-earnings ratios. You know, we've been so obsessed with corporate profits and uh, what's happening with interest rates, what's happening with the Fed and bond buying. We may have gotten our, our, our eye off the real price, P.E. ratios. And you write that you think P.E. ratios suggest that stocks might be a bit overvalued now. Well, that's right. Now, the P.E. ratio basically is a price-to-earnings ratio. It basically says, okay, let's look at the price of either a stock or the market as a whole and divide it by the earnings of either that particular company or the overall market. And averaging it over many, many decades, that average turns out to be around 15 or 16. So basically, the, uh, the market says on average, I'm willing to pay 16 times as much as what a company earns per share in any given year. So that's sort of the standard that we can use to look and see whether the market is over or undervalued. Right now, the market is at about 18, uh, depending on which, uh, which market average you look at and which earnings estimates uh, you're, you're taking uh, into account and so forth. So that's not an exact science, but that suggests the market is moderately overvalued. Now, the good news in that, if there is good news, is that valuations exert only a weak gravitational pull on the market over any given short-term period. Basically, uh, markets uh, take into account valuations over very, very long periods of time. And indeed, that's where the bad news comes in. If you were to try to make a 10-year forecast based on the current valuations of the market, you'd have to uh, guess that the market will provide a lower-than-average return. Yeah over the next 10 years. But that doesn't mean the market can't uh, you know, continue to have very impressive returns for the next 6 to 12 months. The market is filled, market history is filled with examples of where the market will be overvalued and continue to become even more overvalued. So this is not any short-term prediction, I hasten to say. It simply means that uh, the long term is perhaps not as bright, especially not as bright as it was in March of '09 when this bull market began, when, of course, that same P.E. measure was suggesting that the, 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 the future was much brighter. You know, Alan Greenspan was often called the maestro, but Bernanke really has to be the maestro, doesn't he? Because if he doesn't massage this just right, it could set off a uh, panic in the market if he, if he undoes the bond buying too quickly, correct? I think that's true. It's a very, very tricky game that he's playing. On the other hand, I think you were saying earlier you have to keep your eyes on the prize, and that's earnings. And I think... It's, people will, of course, sell at the moment he makes anything, uh, any noises to the effect that he might be taking the foot off the pedal. On the other hand, I think people will, uh, you know, jump first and then ask questions later. And yeah. when they start asking questions, they may like what they see because, after all, the only reason he'll be taking the foot off the pedal is that economic news is actually uh, stronger and more positive than uh, than previously expected. And Indeed, the, the signs are that the economy, no, no one would ever say the economy is in great shape right now, but that the recovery is perhaps uh, gaining on its own steam now rather than just require, just relying on what the Fed is doing. And that is the kind of news that allows the Fed to start easing up. And I think in the end, investors will say, you know what, uh, I, I perhaps reacted too hastily. Uh, yes, the market will uh, you know, plunge if uh, – if Bernanke doesn't play this game just exactly right. But, you know, I'm wondering if that might not be a good buying opportunity for people who are willing to, to take the risk, because the only reason, as I say, that uh, there would be that kind of uh, tapering would be because the economy actually is stronger than we had thought. And, and I would think for some people, rising interest rates are a good thing. Some people might like to see a little better than point something in their money market account, Right. Well, that's right. We have to remember that the, there are many, many casualties to what uh, the, the Federal Reserve's policy has been for the last five years, and one of them is all of those people who live on fixed income and need uh, their interest on their savings account. Basically, the, the Fed has said we do not want people saving money. We, we want to yeah. encourage them to go out and take risks, go out and buy a house or put your money in the market, and eventually people will get that message. But I I don't think it's a good thing for the long term to have people not saving money, obviously. And secondly, it's, been, it's just been devastating to many people, especially in the retirement years, who are living on fixed incomes, who are just not getting the kind of interest that they, they were otherwise planning for. So that would be a good thing. And the other thing to, to point out when you say that uh, interest rate increases may not be a bad thing is that one of the most reliable indicators that economists look at to try to predict whether we're going to go into a recession, is what's known as the yield curve, which basically compares long-term interest rates with short-term interest rates. 
And it turns out that when long-term rates are much higher than short-term rates, and by the way, that's the condition we exist right now. It's mm-hmm. called a, you know, a steep yield curve. That's actually one of the most positive leading indicators that we're not about to slip into recession. What, when it's just the opposite, where short-term rates are actually higher than long-term rates, that's actually a very, very bad sign. That's known as an inverted yield curve. You'll sometimes hear economists talk about that. Yeah. And that would suggest that we uh, have a greater, uh, you know, a great chance of slipping into recession. The New York Fed has a page of its website. I put the link in one of my recent columns. You can go to it. But basically, based on where interest rates are, even after what we saw in the month of June with higher rates, they're, they're gauging the probability of recession over the next 12 months at only 2.5%, which we're hoping, of course, that they're right. Mark Holbert from the Holbert Financial Digest, kind of rubbing the crystal ball there some and trying to look ahead toward the second half of the year. Truth is, no one knows. Do we have good markets on the way, blah markets, bad markets? So much depends, quite frankly, on the Federal Reserve. At the Presley Group, we specialize in protecting and preserving your retirement nest egg. Christy Smith will join me in a few moments in our next segment to talk about how to make sure you don't go into retirement with a lot of uncertainty, how to guarantee retirement income. And by the way, this morning, for anyone who calls and schedules a free, no-obligation, one-on-one consultation, we'd like to offer you a free copy of Christy's new book. It's called Plan, Protect, Preserve. It's all about having a good estate plan for you and your family. Chris and I are both certified estate planners, and we can really help point you in the right direction on some uh, estate planning basics. So, again, if you call us at 791 5773, that's 791 5773 this morning and schedule that free one on one, no obligation, no cost consultation to talk about your retirement. We'll be more than happy to give you a free copy of Christie's book, Plan, Protect, Preserve. We'll come back in a moment. Christy will join me. I'm going to talk as well about some interesting comments from John Bogle. He's the founder of Vanguard, and he says there is a retirement train wreck on the horizon for many Americans. We'll discuss that in a moment here on Your Money Matters. And welcome back to Your Money Matters here on Talk 107.3 FM. I'm Matt Kennedy, and again, our thanks to Mark Holbert from MarketWatch.com and the Holbert Financial Digest. Christy Smith with me now. Christy, the owner, founder, and president of the Presley Group. Uh, Interesting stuff from Mark Holbert there. And I know when you were in New Mexico with Presley, Mm -hmm. your phone was ringing. Clients were calling you, say, Christy, we're just curious, why did the stock market go down so much today? Well, I think really the biggest question was, is this the real downturn? Because I think we're all kind of bracing ourselves now. You know, we look at uh, the cover of Investment News magazine, bond investors headed for exits. You know, there there are very clear warning signs. The market's at a high. Uh, Our deficits are not getting any smaller. No. Uh, You know, there's very clear warning signs that we can have some very rocky roads ahead and most of us are starting to brace ourselves for that now you know a couple of weeks ago uh, I'm I'm traveling with my daughter she's a she's a contestant in the Louisiana uh, I'm sorry the the national junior high finals rodeo in Gallup New Mexico and yes my phone did start ringing off the hook and really what it boiled down to is you know people were seeing this two three four hundred point a day drop in the market and and you know they became concerned they want to know is this the real downturn? But I don't really, I don't really think that um, you know that is the big downturn. You know, I, I think it was just a hint from Bernanke that you know we got to start doing some things different. Yeah. And, you know, Wall, Wall Street just doesn't like easy money. Well, uh, Federal Reserve Chairman, this is from the Wall Street Journal from Thursday of this week. Uh, Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke sought to reassure jittery stock markets that while the central bank could. There's that word again, Christy, could start winding down their $85 billion a month. Yeah, I said billion, $85 billion a month bond buying program later this year. Fed officials aren't abandoning their broader uh, commitment to easy money policies. Let me put that in plain English. Eventually, the government's going to have to stop printing so much money, Bernanke says. When he hinted at that two weeks ago, The stock market said, oh, no, there goes our easy money, and the market fell. Interest rates skyrocketed. So Bernanke came back Thursday, or actually on Wednesday, and he said, look, 
we're going to slowly reduce bond buying, but I am committed, he said, to keeping interest rates really low until unemployment hits 6.5%. So all of you out there who are saying, I don't want to be in the market, I want to be in CDs or something, I want to be in bonds, guess what? It may be a long time before interest rates really rise again because Bernanke has reaffirmed they're going to keep interest rates super low. Well, in, in, in the Investment News magazine uh, just, just this week, it, it's talking about how uh, investors are really starting to flee from bonds now. You know, it says investors yanked a record 60, $60 billion out of bond funds. And, uh, and, and that's, that's the most it's been since August of 2011. You know, the reality is, Matt, is that we still are living in a very uncertain economy. Little things that, that are said or done affect us all, and it's because everybody's on edge right now. Wall Street is definitely on edge. Now, I want to talk about just for a minute, and, and I'm going to ask you to explain this because you do such a good job at it. I want to talk about a, a bond versus a bond fund because I've got a lot of people that's been coming yeah. into the office and they think that they're in bonds, but in fact, they're in what's called a bond mutual fund. It happens a lot. We see it all the time. A bond held to maturity is perfectly safe and it's a guarantee. It's backed by guarantees like the programs that we use, the fixed index annuities. I mean, there are guarantees that say this bond, if held to maturity, will yield you X percent. So let's make up some numbers. Let's say it's a bond paying 4%. Christy, you hold that bond to its maturity. Whatever that maturity is, we see 30-year bonds sometimes in uni bonds. You will get your interest, and you will get what's called the par value of the bond back once it matures. The par value means what you put in. So you put 30000 into a bond. It pays you interest. When the bond matures, you are able to take your principal back and reinvest it. Now, some investors just reinvest the, the earnings. But a bond held to maturity is fine. It is fine. But, Christy, how often do you and I sit with someone and they'll say to us, well, you know, I'm not really in the market. I'm safe because I've got a bond fund. Folks, well, I see that a lot. Please do not confuse bond funds for bonds held to maturity. A bond fund absolutely will decline in value when interest rates are rising. So if you've been sold on the idea that, oh, you're fine, you've got bond funds, be careful. The spike we've seen in interest rates in the last six weeks has meant that the average bond fund is down about 3%. Be careful. Be sure you understand the difference between holding a bond and owning a bond fund. There is a big difference. Well, and not only that, what you have to understand is that when you're in a bond fund, you're actually uh, invested into a, a mixture of bonds. And a lot of times we'll see that these bond funds will even have a, a, a large majority of of junk bonds sure. in that category just to try to boost up the return. So, you know, if you're going to look at a bond, I caution uh, to look at, a, at to using a bond fund. Wow. But the reality is, is that, you know, this misconception of bonds and bond funds being totally safe, you know, we all want to believe that a bond is safe. And, and yes, if you have a, a individual bond, a, a corporate bond that you buy for a certain term and you hold it until that term is up, uh, you are going to be con in a safe environment. You're going to get your money back. Uh, but if you're in a bond fund, your money is not as safe. Well, if you're looking for a safe investment, uh, give us a call at 791-5773. At the Presley Group, we'll talk more about this later in the show, but we specialize in using fixed indexed annuities, which, by the way, have as their principal investment bonds held to maturity. But then we're allowed to link a portion of your money or all of your money to a stock market index. Now, when we say index, we mean like the S&P 500 or the Dow or the NASDAQ. Our plans allow you to have the peace of mind of knowing that your principal is always protected. Now, a lot of you uh, rely on Social Security benefits to uh, help generate a retirement income. Now, I want to tell you that in just the last week alone, I've had three different people who come into the office, show me their, their statement, you know, their expected Social Security payment. And what we found is that three different clients 
did not have the correct earnings reported on their Social Security statement. So just by coming into the office and yeah. letting us take a look at that, we were able to help them because they are, they're able to go in and contact Social Security uh, Administration and, and have it corrected. So if you would like us to help you, uh, cr help you look at your Social Security benefits, determine when is the best time for you to take your Social Security benefits, or just make sure that, that, that they're on track, you know, that the information on there is correct, you can give us a call and schedule just a one-hour complimentary visit. We'd love to sit down and meet with you. Our number seven nine one five seven seven three. And don't forget, we've got a great website. Our website's got a lot of valuable information. It's got uh, dates for our upcoming workshops. Uh, we've got a big identity theft workshop coming up. Go to our website, safemoneyplan.net, and you can always request information that you need on our website, safemoneyplan.net. The question becomes, Christy, when the easy money runs out or when the easy money doesn't come quite as easily, when Ben Bernanke does decide finally, and this is what uh, Mark Holbert was talking about last segment, when that starts to happen, how will Wall Street react? Well, the truth is no one knows. I mean, is it going to be a quick downturn because people start saying, oh, no, the easy money is gone? Or will Wall Street be in for another two, three, four years of a good bull run? Because no one knows, now is a fantastic time to come see us and evaluate where you are. We are at all-time highs on Wall Street. Many of you are just now back where you were from the bad days of 08 and 09. And we can show you how, if you're in the market, how to take some of your money out of risk. You really have to evaluate, is this a high? And here's the beautiful thing. If this is the high and we have some sort of downturn when Bernanke takes his foot off the gas pedal, you'll never lose a dime in our plans. But if the market keeps running up like it has the last couple of years, you'll share in those gains. Uh, let me tell you, Christy, uh, I have a client who, uh, Mr. Mike, opened an account with us just over one year ago. And I visited with him earlier this week and over the last year, his gains, by linking his gains to the uh, indexes, right at 9%. Right at 9%. Now, the stock market has been fabulous. Mr. Mike was ecstatic. A 9% gain in something that absolutely is safe. And the beautiful thing is that gain is his. One it's of, locked in. One of the biggest um, you know, questions I get asked from people is, you know, th they want to know if we can help them evaluate their current 401k plan options. And, you know, the, the reality is, is that so many people suffer in their 401ks because they, they don't have a lot of guidance, you know. Now, we're not financial advisors, so we're not able to give financial advice, but what we can do is run the Morningstar reports so that you can make your own educated decision. You know, people, people just need guidance. If you're 50 and, and you know, want to retire at 60, you got to really start paying attention to these things. One of the things I've noticed, Matt, is that you know, a, a lot of the companies have shifted in the 401k plans to these lifestyle balanced funds, you know, or target funds. You know, if you're going to retire in, in the year 2020, there, there may be a target fund that you right. would use to help you get there. And they've done this to try to simplify things, they you have. know. But the reality is, is that those funds often don't do as well as even the market does and people just don't understand so if you would like your um, your portfolio um, if you would like us to run Morningstar reports for you so that you can really look uh, at your current 401k plan uh, a little closer, maybe make some decisions before this downturn comes. You know, right now is, is, the, is the time. It is. You know, I, it, it's, our, it's, so, it's so strange to me that in good times, you know, the phone doesn't ring as much. When, 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 the, when the market starts going down, our phones are ringing off the hook. Mm -hmm. The reality is, is right now, right now is the perfect time because we've seen this great market. We've come back to where we were. You know, why not take a look and see what can you do different before the market actually takes that downturn? You're sitting at the tip of the mountain right now. And if you're five years out for retirement, you really need to evaluate where are you today before this downturn hits. Because then, you know, if you make changes now, 
in a year, in six months, in two months, when, when the market does take that turn, and we all think it's coming, we just don't know exactly when will it come. But when it does, it won't impact you the way it would if you just sat there and did nothing. And I'll tell you, doing nothing is the easy thing to do. It is. But it is not the right thing to do. Christy, uh, I know someone out there is rolling their eyes because I can see through the radio. You're rolling your eyes and saying, ah, there's Christy again, Christy and Matt. They're trying to scare me. No, we're not trying to scare you. We're trying to prepare you. Those two words sound similar, don't they? Scare, prepare. Yes. We're not trying to scare you. We're trying to prepare you. I sat with a client uh, earlier this week. He, he simplified it so much. He said, Matt, I'm finally back where I was in 08. He's over 59 and a half, so he can take money out of his 401k even while working. By the way, that's called an in-service distribution where the IRS allows you to take money and move it out of your 401k and put it into an IRA. And he said, I never want to risk having to work beyond age 65. He said, that's my goal. And I know that if an 08 happens, and we're not saying it will, but any major downturn could alter his plans. So he came to us. We, we are now protecting and preserving a portion of his nest egg. He's still in the market. He's still got his 401k. He's still contributing, which is smart. But he's taken a large hunk of it out and put it in one of our plans because he knows he will never lose a dime of that money. Well, and you may think that all we do at the Presley Group is, you know, focus on retirement money and retirement income. But the reality is, is that we do so much more. You know, we are certified estate planners. When you come in and you build a retirement plan, you know, I call it building a strong house. You want to make sure that your estate plan is strong as well. We are certified estate planners. We can give you great information so that you can seek legal advice to get the things done that sure. need to be done. You know, and then not only that, there are often other things that we need to help keep the walls of that house uh, of that house uh, strong. We need long-term care insurance. Sometimes we need. Medicare supplemental insurance. You know, there's we need life insurance. We talk about building an estate versus just passing on some money to your family. You know, there's lots of different strategies that we use at the Presley Group. It's just up to you to make that decision to come in and and take us up on the opportunity to to learn something. We had a workshop last night, and the one of the ladies I was talking to, she told me she said, you know, Christy, she said I've attended quite a bit of these. Uh, workshops and she said I got to tell you you really have the mind of a teacher and I said you know the funny Good. thing is is that Matt tells me all the time I never was a salesperson I should have been a teacher yeah and I said you know I, I really have the best of both worlds but the reality is is that we just want to help you we want to teach you we're not gonna you know twist your arm to do business with us we want to make a difference and if you're one of those that is sitting there right now on the verge of retirement know that you need to make some strong decisions maybe you're already retired maybe in the last two years you left your job you went to a large brokerage firm or you know even an independent brokerage firm and you put your money into the market and you're relying on the market but now at this high you're starting to feel a little uncertain you can still make a change a change we don't only help those of you who are approaching retirement we have people that come in to meet with us that are you know in their 70s they've yes. been retired for 10 years from now so you know you don't have to do things the same way you've been doing them the last couple of years have looked really good that let's face it they have but we want to always base our retirement plan on worst case scenarios we want to we don't want to hope for the best and plan for the best you know we want to hope for the best and plan, plan for, for the, the worst, worst. and right. that's what we're going to do with the Presley group I urge you give us a call schedule that one-on-one -on -one consultation to come in and let's just talk about your needs our phone number is 791-5773 if you are outside of the Baton Rouge area it's 1-800-791 Five seven seven three. It's a free, no obligation retirement consultation, just so you can evaluate your options. And for those of you who are not in the market but you're stuck in those low yielding CDs, come see us. We have some great plans that give you far greater potential. Again, it's seven nine one five seven seven three. You can also make an appointment online at safemoneyplan.net. That's safemoneyplan.net. When we come back in a moment, some very sobering words from John Bogle. 
John Bogle is the founder of Vanguard. Maybe the greatest mutual fund company out there. John Bogle says there is a train wreck awaiting American retirement. We'll tell you what he's talking about in a moment here on Your Money Matters, presented by the Presley Group on Talk 107.3 FM. Good morning. Welcome back to Your Money Matters, brought to you by the Presley Group. We're excited to be here. I'm joined this morning with co- my co-host, Matt Kennedy. Um, you know, Matt, the thing is, is that when people come into the office, they think we're all about just retirement planning. And the reality is, is that we do so much more. You know, we talk about estate planning. Mm-hmm. We are certified estate planners. And so recently we've released my book that I wrote called Plan, Protect, Preserve. Now, the book is exactly what it implies by the title. It helps you plan. It helps you protect so that you can preserve what you have when you're no longer here, pass it to your family uh, the way that you really want it to go. And so today, we're going to offer each of you that calls the office and schedules a complimentary visit, we're going to offer you a copy of our book called Plan, Protect, Preserve. Simply call us at 791-5773. Christy's book is well-written. And remember, because we're in Louisiana, we've got that fancy old Napoleonic code. So things are done differently here. And your years of expertise in Louisiana, because you're from the marvelous town of Simsport, <laughs> means that you know you understand what it takes to get uh, estate planning done in Louisiana. Now, we're not lawyers. We don't draw up the papers for you. But we're able to help you understand what you need. When it comes to wills and living wills and trust and things of that nature. So, again, for those who call today, no obligation. Simply call, uh, agree to sit down with us and just talk and get a free copy of Christie's book, Plan, Protect, Preserve. Our number is 791-5773. You know, Christie's, ever so often we run across articles that really jump out at us. And this is an article that jumped out at us. John Bogle is the founder of Vanguard, the great Vanguard uh, mutual fund company. And recently on PBS, they had a fantastic series. I don't know if you saw this or not, but it was, a, it was part of Frontline, and it was a show called The Retirement Gamble. Did you see it yet, Christy? It, yes. It's phenomenal. It, it, folks, if you have a chance, go to pbs.org and just search for The Retirement Gamble. And I watched this show with great interest. And John Bogle, the founder of Vanguard, it's a long article, but he basically told PBS that there's a train wreck awaiting American retirement. And one of the biggest reasons, Christy, is because while the 401K is a great savings vehicle, here's what happens. It's what you said earlier. Most people set it and forget it. They they have little or no guidance whatsoever in picking and choosing funds. And Mr. Bogle goes into great detail, too, saying, quite frankly, and I'm paraphrasing his words, the industry's gone crazy, and there are so many variations of funds out there when really the focus should have been what the original mutual fund was in 1924, a fund that tracks the index. Because so often the indexes outperform the fund manager's who try to get all fancy and find ways to beat the funds. Well, our indexed annuities track these indexes. That's why the indexes have actually outperformed the true market in our plans over the last 12 years because they haven't suffered the setbacks. How many of you don't don't become real active in managing your 401k because you don't know what choices to make? You get that booklet or you go online and you look at it and it's just so confusing that you just kind of click, you know, check, check, check. You know, you just don't know which ones to choose. And and that's really uh, one of the biggest concerns for me when we're when we're working with uh, people who are contributing to their 401k and trying to maximize that retirement income. Maybe they're going to retire in a few years and they're just trying to make the most of it. The problem is they just don't have enough guidance. You know, one of the things that, that, uh, John in this article is talking about is that, you know, we, we often don't understand the fees that are associated with the mutual funds as well. Well, 401ks can be very expensive, and I don't know if uh, many of you have noticed, but have you opened your 401k statement recently? You may be surprised to find a lot of fees. Now, a couple of years ago, you didn't see those fees. 
Does that mean those fees weren't there? No. The SEC, at the urging of the Obama administration, now requires 401k companies to more clearly disclose the fees. Now, don't get us wrong. We're not saying don't own a 401k. No. In fact, we like for our clients to contribute to 401ks when it's when it's a when they're able to. But whenever you get over that age of 59 and a half, and you're able to shift some of the funds out of the 401k into an IRA, number one, we can help you by keeping the money safe, linking it to the market. But more importantly, we can dramatically reduce or even eliminate those fees. You know, Matt, one of the things that, that makes me feel so good with our clients is uh, having an annual review where we're able to show them that they've made double-digit returns oh, in a good year. And I know this week you and I kind of did the happy dance when we got your parents' statement in. You know, people think that a that a fixed account, that a that a safe account, they think that there's no growth potential. But the reality is, is that our products are allowing us to use the indexes as a benchmark to generate us a return. So in years where we see the market thriving, like it has in the last 12 months, our clients are making good money as well. Now, let's let's not, um, you know, I don't want to be misleading. If, if the market's gone up 30%, in, in your fixed indexed annuity or your hybrid account, you're not going to make 30%. It, you, you, we typically we'll see maybe half of that, yeah. you know, but the reality is, is that when the market takes its turn and it will sooner or later, it's, it, you know, it's, it's a trend that's going to happen when it makes its turn, then our clients that have made those great returns this year will not lose any of it because in a fixed index annuity on your contract anniversary date, your gains are locked into the account. So they become actual realized gains. When you're in the market, say you're in your 401k and and you're participating and you're growing, things look good for the last 12 months. Every time you look at it online, uh, it gets bigger and bigger, you're happy, okay? But if you don't if you don't get out of those funds and and capture those gains, they're not what we call a realized gain. So, if, if the market takes its turn in 3 months and and goes down 20-30%, then what happens? Those gains that were so good this year disappear. And in a fixed indexed annuity, that doesn't happen. The reason it doesn't happen is because the gains are locked in annually, contractually. They're locked in. They are realized gains. The, the, it, it, it's, it's just amazing to me that people do not understand this concept. Well, what happens is, and I'm not fussing, but I am a little, people get greedy. You know, you're watching your statement. Maybe you aren't in a 401k. Maybe you're already retired. You have an IRA. and It's in the market, and you're watching, and you're getting that quarterly statement, or you're checking it daily online, and you're like, yeah, keep going up, keep going up. Folks, it's all on paper, or it's all on a computer screen. At the Presley Group, the companies that we use lock in those gains. We can't stress that enough. The client that I mentioned uh, earlier, Mr. Mike, saw his gain in his account go up. That gain is now his. And so if Bernanke takes his foot off the gas pedal and we have a 10, 12, 15% drop, not saying it's going to happen, but if it does, Mr. Mike won't lose a dime. The money he earned is locked into his account. That is so powerful. Now, if you're young and you're still saving into that 401k and your dollar cost averaging, you can ride the ups and downs. But we feel that once you get 50 and older, 55 certainly and older, you really have to be careful. We like to call it the rule of 100. We talked about this earlier this week at our workshop. It's a very simple rule. It's a, it's a broad, generic rule, but try this on for size. Take your age and then subtract it from 100. So if you're 50, the rule of thumb says you shouldn't have any more than 50% of your money at risk. 50% should be in something safe. When you're 60, 40% of your money. When you're 70, 30% of your money needs to be potentially at risk, but 70% needs to be safe. Why? So you don't run out of money during retirement. And, and not losing your money sounds real good, Matt, but the reality is is that when you are approaching retirement, that's when we need to see your money growing. And so, you know, we have to look at principal protection, but we also have to 
Well, we have to guarantee that the money's going to grow as we get closer to retirement. And so we've got some great retirement plans uh, that are designed to generate retirement income. You know, we've got a plan with security benefit. Right now, it's a fixed index annuity. It'll offer you an uh, 8% bonus up front. So if you put $100,000 uh, it's going to be 108 to start with, and then your income value is going to grow at a minimum of 7% a year compounded interest. So think about it. If you're 60 years old and you put $100,000 in and you don't add anything else to it and you only make what's contractually guaranteed, 7% a year compounded interest, by the time you're 65, that 100 is guaranteed contractually to be over $150,000, and then we can flip a switch and turn on a guaranteed retirement income that you nor your spouse can outlive. Now, I I know we're crunched for time, but I have to stress this, Matt. 7% a year contractual minimum guarantee on an income value. Let's face it. When we're close to retirement, the money we've saved in our 401k accounts, that is money that we are counting on to generate a retirement income, right? Absolutely. So so knowing that we are at an all-time high right now, knowing that you know our deficits aren't getting any less, our unfunded mandates aren't getting less, you know, our system is not it, it, it's not thriving, unemployment's high, you know, all of these factors are are not working for us. They're working against us. Think about the power of being able to move your money into an account that's going to give you an 8% bonus up front and a 7% a year contractual guarantee every year until you turn that income on. I mean, if you've got 10 years till you retire, you can grow at 7% a year minimum on an income value for 10 years. I mean, that is substantial. Wake up. Wake up. We have to do things different. These insurance companies have created great plans for us to do that. That's the security benefit plan. It's called the secure income annuity. And, you know, it's really designed to create guaranteed retirement income. Now, you might be saying to yourself, you're driving right now, you're listening to us, and you're going, oh, Lord, Christie's a scam artist. There ain't no place out there that can give us 7% a year. You know, well... The the only way they can do that is because they're counting, they, meaning the insurance company, they're counting on the money being with them for a long period of time. Because we're talking about a lifetime of Guaranteed income. income. That's right. And so they're going to have your money for many, many years, and it's the time value of money. That's right. Yeah. So, I mean, you you just got to do things differently. You owe it to yourself to get a retirement checkup. Give us a call and and schedule your complimentary visit. How many of you go to the doctor once a year for an annual physical? Now, maybe when you're 30, you don't. But when you're 55, we all tend to go. You know, you just had your annual physical. Just had it. Okay? When you're 60, we're going to go have that annual physical. Don't you think that you owe it to yourself to have an annual retirement checkup? And and that goes for those of you who are still working and, and even more for those of you who are not. Because if you're still working, you still have that earnings potential where you can save more. But once you've retired, you know, you lose that benefit. You're retired. What you have is what you have. So you owe it to yourself to give yourself a retirement physical once a year. Give us a call and schedule that retirement physical. Our phone number is 791 791- Five seven seven three seven nine one five seven seven three, or don't forget you can go to our website, Safe Money Plan. You can request a consultation directly from our website. You can come into our office. We're here in Denham Springs, right on Veterans Boulevard, or Matt can come out to see you. It's safemoneyplan.net. And again, when you schedule that free consultation, we'll give you a free copy of Christie's book, Plan, Protect, Preserve. Okay, Christy, just a few minutes left. I'd like to read for you what I think is the most powerful paragraph written by John Bogle. John Bogle, uh, again, interviewed for the PBS uh, Frontline special, The Retirement Gamble. John Bogle is the founder of the Vanguard uh, Mutual Fund Company. And, again, he's pushing be smart, stay in index funds. Of course, he's with Vanguard, so he's pushing Vanguard. But our plans, again, link you to these indexes. Listen to what he says. Get Wall Street out of the equation. Get all these multiple trades out of the equation. Get management fees out of the equation. 
Get excessive taxes out of the equation and then forget it. Have confidence, which is reasonable, that corporate America will grow with America. Christy, that's so beautiful. That's what our plans do. Exactly. Because we're using the indexes. Now, while we're not putting your money directly in the index, we're linking to the index, sharing in the returns. We're getting Wall Street ups and downs out of the equation. That I, That is the most powerful thing from a guy who I'm just founded here, Vanguard. Yeah, I'm just sitting here thinking, wow, that's, we, we, need to, we need to print that and frame it and put it in, in the lobby when people come in. Well, the beautiful thing is some of you say, well, I have to get Wall Street out of the equation, so that means I have to go to the bank and I have to settle for nothing. We can use Wall Street as a barometer at the Presley Group, sharing in the gains when the market's good, protecting you when the market's bad, and giving you, like Christy mentioned, the promise – of guaranteed retirement income. We're passionate about it because we see it change lives. Nothing excites me more than the meeting I had Friday. Friday, I sat with a couple, and I brought them there. They had used the Security Benefit Secure Income Plan. They are about seven to eight years away from retirement. Christy, I sat in their kitchen Friday and showed them contractually exactly how much money they would be getting when he calls it quits. And nothing makes you feel better oh. to say, this is the worst case scenario. This is worst case. If Wall Street performs better, we'll do better. But guaranteed, you're going to have X number of dollars every month. And the relief that they have now, because they know, they know now they have a plan. It's about having a plan. If you want to schedule a complimentary visit to come in and just, just do a retirement physical for yourself, you know, whether you're already retired or maybe you're approaching retirement, give our office a call, schedule your complimentary visit. Our number is 791-5773, 791-5773. Thanks much. Back in just a moment to wrap it up here on Your Money Matters, presented by the Presley Group. 